In the far north, surviving winter meant more than simply stacking firewood or building a sturdy house. The Vikings lived in landscapes where winter winds cut through clothing, rattled timber walls, and could drain body heat faster than a hearth could replace it. Modern documentaries focus on long ships, weapons, and sagas, yet one of the most overlooked pieces of Viking engineering was the way they sealed their homes against those brutal winds. Archaeologists studying longhouses from Norway to Iceland keep finding traces of a method that worked so effectively that variations of it survived centuries beyond the Viking Age. It wasn't a luxury. It was a line between comfort and cold that could kill. And today, this ancient sealing technique offers practical value for modern builders, off-grid homesteaders, and anyone who appreciates historical craftsmanship that still performs better than some modern shortcuts. The core of the Viking home seal relied on a strategic blend of turf, wool, and timber joinery. The Vikings didn't depend on a single material to keep the wind out. Instead, they combined several elements, each strengthening the other. The timber skeleton of a longhouse created the structural frame, but where the wind tried to enter, between beams, under door frames, along the roof line, the Vikings packed those gaps with insulating organic matter. Turf was the primary material because it was abundant, dense, and had natural moisture-regulating properties. When tightly pressed into wall gaps or layered over the roof, turf acted as both a windbreak and a thermal barrier. But turf alone wasn't the secret. In particularly harsh regions, Vikings supplemented it with raw wool stuffed into smaller cracks and seams. Wool trapped air, resisted moisture, and maintained insulation even when slightly damp. Combined with the overlapping timber joinery that directed wind away, rather than letting it strike straight into the gaps, the result was a house that held warmth consistently even in Arctic storms. The effectiveness of this method came from how the materials interacted with changing weather. Turf expanded slightly when wet, which meant that after a rainstorm or heavy snowfall, the turf-packed seams became even tighter. Wool, meanwhile, stayed resilient through cycles of freezing and thawing. Timber beams were carved with simple but deliberate angles that created natural wind deflection, preventing cold air from funneling directly into weak points. This combination created a seal that didn't rely on precise machining or modern adhesives. It adapted. The colder and wetter the climate became, the tighter the seal grew. Archaeological studies of longhouses in Iceland show turf walls up to several feet thick, capable of keeping internal temperatures stable even when winds outside reach dangerous speeds. This sealing strategy extended to doors, roof edges, and smoke holes. The Viking door was a vulnerable spot, yet their approach was remarkably advanced. Instead of relying on a single thick plank, Viking doors used layered boards joined in a way that reduced warping. Around the frame, they pressed a mix of turf clods and wool fibres, creating a natural gasket that blocked wind gusts. The roof edges received similar treatment. Where the thatched or turf-covered roof met the walls, Builders overlapped materials so wind couldn't slip underneath. 
Even smoke holes, necessary for ventilation in hearth-centred homes, were designed with raised rims and adjustable turf flaps to restrict wind without smothering the fire. Each part of the house followed the same principal block, divert and insulate. This technique becomes especially valuable today when adapted to off-grid or low-tech living. For anyone building a cabin, shed or emergency shelter, the Viking method offers a practical blueprint. You don't need turf planes outside your door to apply the concept. The modern equivalent uses packed natural fibre insulation like unspun wool, hemp fibre or even dried grasses for gap stuffing. For outer sealing, thick sod, clay or earth bags can act as wind barriers. The process follows three steps. First, identify all the points where air sneaks in. Corners, joints, door frames, roof edges. Second, pack those gaps with a fibrous material that traps air but resists moisture. Wool is still one of the best materials available. Third, layer an external mass such as turf, sod or clay-rich soil to add density and wind resistance. Even a modern tiny house can reduce heating needs dramatically using this approach. Examples of modern application show how effective this method still is. Off-grid farmers in northern Scotland pack wool into their cabin walls to replicate Viking-style draft control. Icelandic eco-builders still use layered turf on experimental longhouse restorations because it stabilises internal temperatures better than certain synthetic insulations. Survivalist building emergency winter shelters have found that stuffing moss and wool into log gaps, then piling sod against the exterior, can raise interior temperatures by several degrees, even without a large fire. So, these modern examples aren't just reenactments. They're actual proof that the Viking method works, you know, because it's built on simple physical principles. Trap air, add mass, and direct wind away from weak points. The technique also teaches an overlooked principle about cold weather shelter design. Most people focus on heating, but the Vikings focused on wind sealing first. A mediocre heat source inside a well-sealed shelter performs better than a powerful heat source inside a drafty one. This aligns with what archaeologists and cold regions engineers agree on today. Defence against wind loss matters more than heating efficiency in survival conditions. The Vikings mastered this long before modern building science formalised the concept. If you want more deep-dive explorations into ancient engineering that still works today, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video. These forgotten methods aren't myths. They're tested survival strategies from some of history's toughest environments, and they're worth passing on.